Hey everybody, <clears throat> Professor Ingenson here. I just wanted to do a quick video of the, uh, since you have your case brief coming up, I just wanted to just do a quick little video reminding you about that assignment and also reminding you about like what you should be looking for on the Canvas site as you fill out that assignment. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. Here we go. What do we got here? There we go. Okay, so um, this is our Canvas site, obviously. And if you go to um, the week for this week, let's get to it, religious freedoms, then you see that the assignment there is the case brief one, religious liberties. Go ahead and click on that. Canvas wasn't working earlier today, but it's working now, so it's good. Okay, so um, this uh, basically shows you uh, what the assignment is, the purpose of the case brief, the instructions for the case brief, and that also um, that these are the, the cases that you can choose from for the case brief. And so these are the cases having to do with religious liberties. You can either choose one of the free exercise clause cases, or you can choose one of the establishment clause cases, but it has to be one of the cases that's listed here on the instructions. Uh, now, that being said, probably before you start working on your case brief, make sure you click here, which is components of the case brief. And so let's click on that. And then um, this basically, you know, tells you, and you looked at this earlier in the semester, but I just want to remind you about it. Um, it tells you what a case brief is. Um, it tells you that where you find the case brief it, briefs, there are the, the cases for the case briefs, they're in the textbook. Um, and that uh, a case brief is about three pages long. Uh, and then it shows you basically the components of the case brief, okay? The, uh, that you need a title, the facts of the case, legal issues, et cetera. I'll leave it to you to uh, take a look at that. And then uh, do note here, uh, click on that little um, uh, magnifying glass there. There's an actual example from the class last semester of a, of a case brief, okay? And so, um, you know, you can take a look at this. It has the title up there. It has the facts of the case, the holding, and then it shows you basically how the student did like sort of a, a line by line summary of the reasoning, including the concurring opinions and the dissenting opinions, okay? Uh, so if you're sort of like wondering what a case brief looks like, you can use that example because that will show you uh, a good example. And that was an A example. Uh, it, you know, this isn't about length. I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, a, a a case, a, a, a decision of the court can have just, it can be unanimous. And there is just a, um, you know, the opinion of the court. Uh, sometimes it's a split decision, a 5-4, and then you might have an opinion uh, the majority opinion of the court, you'll have the concurring opinion, you'll have dissents. So there's more work to do. Uh, that shouldn't say that you shouldn't do those because sometimes the most exciting cases are the closely excited, uh, decided cases. Um, so anyways, uh, that's uh, sort of what I wanted to just remind you of as you're working on your case brief. Um, and if you have any additional questions, either drop me an email, a text, or um, come to the office hours on Monday at noon, or we can set up another office hour for you as well. All right, that's it for me. And so I will um, talk to you again soon. Bye.